Think of you. Now think of a school. Now think of all of California. 38.8 million people. From 1918 to 1919, 40 million people died. If that many people died, California's population would have just gone down the drain. However, it was peculiar that the majority of deaths involved the elderly and the young. What caused such a catastrophic amount of deaths? It was the Spanish flu, otherwise known as la gripe. gripe. Life during 1918 was surprisingly calm despite the Great War. In America, people had the money and leisure to enjoy roller skating rinks, movies, dance halls, pool halls, amusement parks, and saloons. America's Hollywood attracted lots of attention, with the also popular celebrities, actors, and actresses filmed in movies. During the 19th century, the roles of women shifted from housewives to more male-dominant fields. Nurses, teachers, social workers, secretaries, and telephone operators. As far as transportation goes, trains became the primary form of transportation within America. In addition, Henry Ford introduced a cheap and affordable automobile that began to mass produce. Alongside with this invention, networks of roads allowed for transportation. To communicate, people relied on telegraphs, which allowed for quick, long-distant messages. What shook America during this time, more than the Great War in Europe, which killed about 5 million people worldwide, was a devastating Spanish flu, which killed about 40 million people worldwide. When the Great World War was coming to an end, a new pandemic emerged. What seemed to be as innocent as the common flu took a turn for the worse. The Spanish flu affected a fifth of the world's population, being most dangerous for people aged from 20 to 40. The Spanish flu killed about 675,000 Americans, which is 10 times the amount of Americans killed from World War I. In 1918, the Great War, otherwise known as World War I, America joined in to fight Germany. They fought in trenches where they were exposed to the most brutal conditions of life. Unfortunately, in that year, an influenza much deadlier than the common cold spread throughout the world, killing millions. In fact, 10 times more Americans died to the influenza than the war. The American military experience in World War I and the influenza pandemic were closely intertwined. The war fostered influenza in the crowded conditions of military camps in the United States and in the trenches of the Western Front in Europe. The virus traveled with military personnel from camp to camp and across the Atlantic and at the height of the American military involvement in the war. September through November 1918. Influenza and pneumonia sickened 20 to 40 percent of the U.S. Army and Navy personnel. High morbidity rates interfered with induction and training schedules in the United States and rendered hundreds of thousands of military personnel non-effective. During the Expeditionary Forces campaign at Meuse Argonne, the epidemic diverted urgently needed resources from combat to support to transporting and caring for the sick and the dead. Influenza and pneumonia killed more American soldiers and sailors during the war than enemy weapons. There is a lot of speculation concerning the origins of La Gripe. It could have come from mosquitoes, or people, or birds. Actually, birds may actually be part of the origin. Some people suggest that there was a precursor virus that birds had, and was afterward mutated by pigs. This idea puts our Spanish flu origin in a topless France in a major troop staging or a hospital camp. From there, La Agrippe would make its move and spread all throughout the land. However, there is another idea that the origins actually was in China. From China, it would spread to the US and the Allied forces would then be the start of the spread of the Spanish flu. Though that can work, it has also been shown that 96,000 Chinese laborers were mobilized to work behind British and French lines. And to support the China origin idea, historian Mark Humphreys 
found archival evidence that there was a respiratory illness that affected northern China in November 1917. In 1918, this illness, according to Chinese health officials, was found to be identical to the Spanish flu. This means that birds may not be guilty for the Spanish flu. Freedom! 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 During 1918, medical knowledge improved drastically. Scientists understood that diseases were caused by microorganisms rather than some imbalance in the body's humors. The scientists' knowledge of influenza wasn't completely accurate. Scientists concluded that influenza was bacterial rather than viral. A leading German scientist, Robert Frederick Pfeiffer, named the bacteria that he thought was the cause of influenza Bacillus. Scientists attempted to use Pfeiffer's information to cure the influenza, but they did not prove to work. Researchers and scientists around the world looked for vaccines to cure this influenza. By the summer of 1919, the pandemic was coming to an end. Those who were infected by the influenza were either dead or built and immune. Recently, in 2008, researchers finally discovered why the flu was so deadly. There were three genes enabling the virus to weaken a victim's bronchial tubes and lungs for pneumonia to easily infect the victim. So why is it so deadly? In 1918, the Public Health Service required health departments to provide information about diseases in their community, but the influenza wasn't a reportable disease. During the March of 1918, Officials in Kansas sent a report to the Public Health Service stated 18 cases of influenza of a severe type. By May, soldiers were becoming ill in Europe in mass amounts. Within two months, the influenza spread from military to civilians, affecting Asia, South America, and back to America. In August, the influenza mutated from the initial flu to a secondary pneumonia to other mutation in Freetown, Sierra Leone, Brest, France, and Boston. Those who were ill suffered from fevers as high as 105 degrees, muscle and joint pains, and most recovered quickly after, but those who fell within a 10 percentile suffered from severe pneumonia, followed by death. By September, the influenza spread to far California, North Dakota, Florida, and Texas. La Gripe, the influenza that changed the life of many, over 9,000. Seriously, life in 1918 was fine until the Spanish flu broke out, and many were taken from their regular lives to their beds. There have been many speculations on the origin of this flu. I got my eye on you, birds. Nevertheless, the effects of the flu range from babies born in that time to the youth and others who got the flu. If you take time to think, this is happening during the war. The need of people was emphasized in this time, on the battlefield and back at home. Anyways, they... <laughs> Bless you. Hey kids, did you know the Spanish flu got its name because there was a lot of press attention when the flu moved from France to Spain. Therefore, this name came from the Allied forces. And in large cities such as New York, people who did not cover their mouths when they coughed were given either a fine or they were sent to jail. Yay! I bet you didn't know, 30 of the 50 largest U.S. cities suffered from an excess mortality from the influenza. Wow! Hospitals became full to bursting and desperate local doctors and nurses were unable to meet the demand for help. Bribes were offered but money was refused. Did you know, again, there was no cure for the 1918 Spanish flu? At this time, there were no effective drugs or vaccines to treat the deadly flu strain or to prevent its spread. There were no vaccines, antivirals, or antibiotics to treat or prevent infections. No! The economy suffered as businesses and factories were forced to close due to sickness among the workers and farmers who became too sick to harvest the crops. I wonder, are there modern antiviral treatments and vaccines effective against the 1918 virus? Two types of antiviral drugs, flumidine and Tamiflu, have been shown to be effective against influenza viruses similar to the 1918 virus, such as swine flu and bird flu. Lastly, 
President Woodrow Wilson reportedly contracted influenza in early 1919 while negotiating the Treaty of Versailles.